Hello everyone, my name is James Rant and today I'm going to record a video that accompanies a blog that I did last week about adding functions from the File Explorer application in Windows onto the context menu in Windows. When I say the context menu, that's the menu you see when you right click on an object. Now if we open up um, here on Windows 10, I mean this should work on any modern version of Windows, we're just using Windows 10 because it's the latest. You go into File Explorer and into a directory such as the Windows directory. All of your files and folders, when you click on one of them, you see in the File Explorer window, you get lots of different functions that you can do on those files and folders from the File Explorer window, right? So you can do all sorts of different things with it. However, in certain instances, you may want to make these things available on the right-click menu instead. You've already got a whole list of options on there, a lot of which are replicated in the File Explorer window, but certain ones are a bit more difficult to get to, and you might want to, to make things easy for your users to put things onto there. As an example, let's pick um, this file here, Registry Editor. If you right-click on that, you get an option to run as administrator, but there's also another option called Run as a different user that you can't very easily expose. What you do is you hold down shift and right click and then you say run as a different user. The other option is if you click on it then click on the share button there, wrong one, <laughs> click on the manage button there, go on and run as administrator and there's a sub menu that says run as another user. So if your users find themselves using that a lot, you may want to make it so that you can expose that function just by right clicking on it. Another interesting one is if you click on a file or folder, if you wanted to see the advanced security options, you'd have to right click, go to properties, go to security, and then click on advanced there to get into advanced security. Now, if you're working with the file explorer window, you can click on share and do advanced security from there. That takes you straight in. But as I said, you may want to make that available on the right click menu. Now anything within this file explorer window, for instance, you've got the, the permanently delete function on there. Um, you know, you may want to put that on the um, on the right click menu. There's there's all, everything on there can be put on the right click menu just by manipulating in the registry. So if we look in the registry, and just run registry editor. Now, all of those file explorer functions are exposed from a registry case. HK Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, Explorer, Command Store, Shell. Everything under here refers to one of those functions that are called from buttons and whatnot within the file explorer interface. So what you need to do is find the one that you want out of there. We're looking for, firstly, the one that does run as a different user, which is this one, Windows Run as User. Some of them are quite self-explanatory and easy to find. Um, the advanced security one was a bit more tricky to find. It's actually this one, Windows Ribbon Permissions Dialog. So you need to identify which registry keys it is that you're looking for within there. The one for permanently delete that we mentioned is another easy one to find, it's Windows Permanent Delete. So you need to find the registry key and make a note of it because we're going to take an export of that registry key and put it somewhere else that exposes it in the right click context menu. Now, right click context menus are generally controlled by this um, hive in the registry, HK Classes Root. But if you know your Windows registry, HK Classes Root isn't kind of a real hive, it's actually a sort of an amalgamation of two different areas, a user area and a device area. The user area is what sits on H, under HK Current User Software Classes, as you can see here, so the subcase of that. And the device level side of this goes under HK Local Machine Software Classes under here. Now, depending where you put it under classes, is where it will be exposed for different file types or sort of sets of file types. So if you put it under either of the, the, the classes bits, if you put it under HK Local Machine Software Classes or HK Current User Software Classes, if you then put it under a sub key called star, that will then appear on the context menu for all files, right? If you put it under a sub key called directory, as we've shown here, that will then appear for all folders, not files, just for folders. Bear with me, if you also put it under a sub key called 
all file system objects and then another key called shell that'll appear for files and folders however you can also set it up just for certain file types or file extensions so for instance if you want to do it for a certain file extension you can see them all listed here they've got ani ans dot application all those sorts of things so you need to identify do you want it to apply to all files or just certain file types and work it out for yourself now in our case the advanced security we want to apply to all files and all folders right because that's where you call advanced security from on a file or a folder object so that one we would put under all file system objects shell yeah for the runners administrator we just want to apply that to executable file types so what we would do in this case is we would identify where we actually want it to go and in this case we have file types called we have one called exe file we also have one here called bat file there's a cmd file as well there's also msi.package which you want to apply it to and finally there's also one called msc file that we can see there so we're going to apply it to those five different file types right <laughs> you still with me okay so once you've identified what you want to take and whether you want to apply it to all users or just a particular set of users and then what you want to apply it to you then need to export out the registry keys and do a little bit of editing so let's first of all export out the one for and what shall we start with we'll start with the run as user one the run as a different user so remember we go a software microsoft windows current version explorer command store shell we need to find windows dot run as user there it is there let's just right click on that and choose export now we're making changes to the registry here so Always be very careful making changes to the registry before you start changing it. Make sure you've got a snapshot of your machine and or a backup of the registry as well. Otherwise you can quite easily end up in a lot of trouble. I've already got a snapshot so I don't need to do it here. Let's export that key and let's call it run as different user. Save it as a .reg file. Right. Then we need to go and have a look at that reg file. That we've just saved which has gone in our documents folder you can see it here right click it and choose edit now obviously it's pulled out where it came from but as you remember we want to move it so that it applies to the file types that we wanted now we were going to do this for hk current user right but you can apply it to hk local machine so let's call it hk current that's about right. Underscore user software classes. Now, under here, don't forget we wanted to apply it to five different file types because this one's just for executable file types, right? So the first one is exe file. So now those registry items will be imported in for the right click menu for executable files only, right? So if we copy that, then paste it in there put the next file type in there which is cmd file and then if we keep going we also wanted one for bat file for batch files the next one was for i can remember without consulting my notes over here so we've got cmd file bat file exe file we also had msc file for microsoft management consoles and one more for msi.package right so let's just save this so now we've got that saved so if we were to import these registry keys back in it would give us all of those items for run as different user on the menu yeah now let's quickly just do the other one that we wanted to do as well which was windows.ribbon permissions dialog let's export that one as well and call it advanced security now this one we wanted to apply to all files and folders yeah so if we edit this one 
we're going to do this one on an HK current user as well because we want to apply it to different user groups and it's software classes now this time don't forget we said we wanted it to apply to all files and folders right so star was for all files directory was for all folders and it was get it right all file system objects for every file and folder yep so now let's just save that in there we now have two registry files that if we import them into the user session will apply that to them yep so if we apply this run this as a user logs in it'll give him those context names but how would we deploy this for lots of different users now this is an interesting question because the obvious way to do it is to do it via group policy preferences so we can apply registry settings based around uh, particular sets of users however um, we have them as reg files sometimes getting reg files into an XML format that can be easily imported into group policy preferences is kind of tricky. However, uh, linked in the article, there is a website, if I go to and drag it over here, this website called Roomcasters has this reg to GPP function. It looks like a very old website, but this really does really work really quite well. So first of all, let's just turn these two files and copy them out of this virtual machine and can I plonk them down on my desktop? Yes I can. Right, so if we go up to here and we click on choose file for the file that we want and let's just get out of all that weird stuff in there. Let's go with the first one, the run as different user and click on the upload button in there. And it'll upload the reg file and it'll ask us to pick what um, settings we want. So we're going to set it to replace because normally in group policy preferences we do use replace. Click on run in logged on users security context. Also tick the item remove it when it's no longer applied because that's always handy. And then click convert and download XML. And it's already downloaded that one. So then let's just go back to here and then choose another file. Uh, this time I'll choose the advanced security one. Click on upload on that one. Set the settings that we had before and download that one as well. So we should have now down here in the downloads font. Just grab those and we will paste them back to the desktop here and then what we will do now is we'll use these XML files to create group policy objects straight away from them. So if we jump across to our domain controller here, and if I just allow myself to say that wonderfully garishly coloured desktop there, should be able to drag those two files into there, he thinks. And there you go. I've inadvertently turned everything off the desktop there rather than just the bits that I wanted, but you know, these things happen. Okay, there's those two XML files that we wanted to get in there now. Now, if you open up Group Policy Management and find wherever my workstation sits, which I believe is down here in this single user or you. So let's create a GPO and link it here. Let's call it Import Context Menu Items. Okay, on that. Now, what we can do is quite simply, if we move that out of the way and edit this by opening it in Notepad and copying it, we should be able to put Group Policy Management, edit this GPO. If we expand preferences, windows settings, registry, and literally just paste into there and click yes, it goes in and creates that entire structure for us under there with all of the required settings already populated inside them as we requested, which is absolutely fabulous. And we can then do exactly the same 
with the advanced security one, click on edit, copy the XML out, back to the group policy object, paste it in, and there we have advanced security sat under there as well. In fact, that one's actually gone in. Let's delete that because I've copied it at the wrong place. Come back to that. Make sure you import them both in at the root. Otherwise, everything will look a bit silly. Now, so now we've got those in, right? All we need to do is set this to only apply to a particular bunch of users. If you wanted to do it for every user on the box, then you would just let them run as is, or you would build them into your image. You probably wouldn't even need to use group policy. But if you right-click on the root of them and choose properties, we can do an item level targeting to it. So we can set it up to apply to a particular group or a particular user. In this case, we're just going to apply it to a particular user. So we've got one user called J Rankin on there. Number one, let's just OK that one. And let's do the same for the advanced security one as well. Item level targeting, target it to a user. Username is J Rankin, the first one, test account number one. So now those registry settings will only apply when that particular user logs in and gives them those new context menu items on there. That's the theory anyway. So let's give it a quick test. Let's just sign this user out on there and we should sign back in as the test user that we've got. Okay. Okay. Logging on as this test user. So let's just let it throw itself out as Windows systems do after you've logged on to them and see if in File Explorer. We have any additional context menu items? Repeat the same process we did before. And there you go. You can see we now have run as another user and advanced security sat on there as well. So it has worked for this user. It's added those registry entries in and we now have access to those context menu items. So we can customize it to well, kind of our heart's content in as much as things that you can find functions within File Explorer. You can then move them onto there to make it easier for your users. Use group policy preferences to apply it. You can target them to specific bunches of users as well. So some users get them and some of them don't. And just a quick warning, if you're planning on applying this group policy to obviously as I did to um, or use that just have the computer objects in them. Don't forget their user settings, so you need to apply a loop back unless you're applying them on the user object. But there you go, I hope that's useful, and that's an accompaniment to the article that I did last week that shows you how to customize those right click menus with different File Explorer functions available in Windows. Thank you.